All right. So this is what I do. I wouldn't know I open, an older <laughs> so. Look, well, I haven't learned the new new system yet. So what I do, hold on. My stuff's running it's kind of slow now. All right. So what I do is I open my NASB. I don't know what translation you, all your stuff's keyed to, your preferred Bible. Oh. What's the Bible you always use? NKJV, but I want to change it to, but now it's, it's NKJV. Okay. All right. Well, this is the NASB, all right? Okay. Same principle works. So what I do is I go to Romans 6. And we're just going to find the word baptism. Okay. Right here. Then what I yes. do is I, I right-click the word and go where there's a ring. You see that ring right there? Yes. Baptizo. Then you swing yes. over to where it says Bible word study and click nice. that. All right? Oh, wow. And so what? this is where your lexicon stuff is going to show up, which are your dictionaries and all that. Yes. Your translation, uh, yeah, all of that stuff. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the New Testament, okay? Yes. And you want to focus. So right now, this is showing the Nestle Allen NA28. You can use the UBS5, whichever Greek text you want to use. And so it's saying Nestle Allen New Testament, all morph texts, verse, all passages. What's so if we was what's morphology, morph morphology, the form of the Greek, like present active, indicative, all that. You just leave That's that alone. True. But right okay. here, where it says all passages, yes. Let's just do Romans real quick. Oh, nice. So now it's showing me the only place where the verb baptizo occurs in Romans is right here, Romans yeah. six three. Okay. okay. Yes. Now, if we want to widen this out, let's say we want to look at Paul's epistle. So we click Pauline. Now it's yeah. bringing up all the times that the verb is showing up. Okay. Yes. So you have that going on. Another thing and, you and, can do okay. is add add the word. I think it's or. Capital O R. Type uh, lemma, L E M M A dot Greek and then colon and then bap. We want baptismos this time. So, what are you doing now? You put lemma? I don't know. Lemma, lemma, lemma. Yeah. Dot That's G. what that, yeah, dot G. The G's for Greek and then colon. And see, now it's bringing up the results for a baptisma. So we got baptizo, baptisma, all right? And if we want to do it again, we can do or, do the same thing, lemma dot greet and B-A-P. So we got baptizo, baptisma, there's baptismas, all right? So now we got that one. And go ahead. before you go any further, you, you have to know all the forms of the Greek word bat, baptism in order to, to continue this thing, right? You, well, you just in... you just know that there's a verb form and there's a noun form. I see. That's all. So, I mean, yeah, in a, in a way you could know that. I, I guess that's what I see your point. Or... Okay. Lemma, I can show you another way to find that out though. Lemma okay. dot Greek so colon. I see. Uh, let's see. Did I do something wrong? Lemma dot Greek dot colon or lemma dot Greek uh, B A P T. Okay, so we got baptismos. We don't need baptizer. That's John the Baptist. Uh, huh. So we can do bapto. But you know what? For good measure, let's just bring in uh, 
lemma dot greek colon b a p baptist days. All right, so now we're selling every reference to baptism, and we can narrow back down to Paul uh, to Romans. Oh, see, now we right. got another one. Did you see what happens? Yeah. So now we got it. the word noun, the noun showing up. And so how, that gives how do you, you know more. Which one's a noun? Oh, just because uh, of my memory. Oh. Well, bapt the English is baptism. Oh, I see. Okay. The noun is have been baptized. But yeah, okay. I know it from memory too. Okay. So uh that's helping you that's helping you see that more. But like I said, if you're just doing for Romans, this is the only time that it shows up in Romans. Okay. Yes. Yes. So uh and you click that something else for Pauline's epistles, right? Yeah, if we switch it to Pauline epistles, now it doesn't include Hebrews in here because it's debated yeah. whether Hebrews was written by Paul or not. I don't think it was written by Paul, but regardless, so you, this gives you you got First uh, Corinthians has a bunch of references. Okay, yes. Galatians has references and Colossians. So these are all the places. And if you wanted to find out like where it's used most, you can go right here and see this chart button. I think this is a chart button. No, no, I'm sorry, right here. Display in charts. So oh, it's nice. showing you that most of his references are in 1 Corinthians. Wow. Ro then Romans, and then Galatians is one, Ephesians is one, and Colossians is one. Romans only has okay. it twice. Huh? Okay. Romans only has it twice, right? Three times. Twice the verb and one time the noun. Because it's searching for all of those right now. Um, okay. And you can do different ones. You can do, we can do pi. And oh, you can nice. show the frequency and all of that stuff. There's a less, more 3D. There's different ones you could do. Uh, columns, donuts, huh. even lollipops, <laughs> pictorial. Oh my goodness! Different things. Um. All right. Let's see. Are these, are things, that you, are these things that you would print and put in a in a. Uh... In a paper? Is that is that the purpose? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't put these in a paper. No, uh, okay. that takes up too much time. I mean, too much okay. room. Uh, yes. But this is information to help you understand. Okay, you focus on your study of Romans, right? right? Well, what I would do at this point right now, because the rules about biblical theology, as Doctor Stoller teaches it, did he ever teach yeah. you anything about biblical theology? No, I'm only the only class I have with him. It's Our theological this, method? No, it's, I'm, only, okay. I'm, I'm in pneumatology with him right now. Okay, all right. So let me just say something real brief about theological method, the way uh, he teaches it. Because if you do something like this in your paper, then it will be beneficial for you. Theological, say the word again? Method. Theological method. How do you do theology? All right. Okay. So in his, and I can't remember all his stages, but it's something like this. One, two, three, four, five. So he would say there's exegesis. Okay. And this is of a book. You're studying the book, right? Yeah. Then you do what's called biblical theology. I'll, I'll tell you what about biblical th theology in a minute, but for right now, I just want to we'll give you these steps. Then yeah. from biblical theology, if I remember right, he goes into categories, like you're categorizing things. What class does he teach that I should be looking for? Did you, what did you call, this is the, no, he teaches theological method. Oh. And, and, and so biblical categories... And then after categories, I think the next one is through history or something. 
I'll look at these in a minute. Um, and then the last one is systematic theology. All you need to know right now is the difference between biblical theology and systematic theology. Okay? Yes. You use it in one of the text messages regarding how I should study the the word yeah. baptized. So biblical systematic. So when you're doing biblical theology, you're you want to stay in the same genre. All right, same genre, the same time period. So that's like if you're doing it through a dispensation or, uh, or maybe through a covenant or whatever, or the same writer. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Anytime you go outside of a different genre or a different time period or a different writer, you're now doing systematic theology. Okay? Mm. So... Yes. By starting with Romans, what we're doing is we're like, okay, Romans, even though uh, we're starting at this level, we're saying the same book, right? So the genre is an epistle, right? The, uh, the writer, of course, is Paul. So we're yes. staying in Pauline theology. Yes. And uh, and then the time period is the church. Right. So, but the issue that you run into is that when Paul's using the word baptism, he's not using it in a back vacuum. So Paul's right. typically going to have an Old Testament reference. More than the culture of the Roman culture at the time or anything in there, his mind is going to go to the Septuagint. Okay. So what that means is we can broaden out our study, our search. Um, let's see how I want to do this. I'll I'll do it from here. So see right here, the Septuagint under textual searches, it's already there. So the verb oh, form oh. shows up four times. But we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the all these right here. Yeah. We're gonna copy them into here. Into the core of the old testament. Yes. Into the so, situation. Yeah. So what you're seeing here is the word bafantes. You should take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in blood. So there's an immersion idea, right? Yeah. Dip, 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 uh, dip, dip, dip. We're dip, dip, dip. Everything's dip. Look at, oh, that your foot may shatter them in blood. Now that's an interesting. Bathe the, your feet in blood. Okay, so that you would plunge me into the pit. See, it's it's an immersion idea. You're being put into something else. Okay. Right. Yes. You got it in Syriac, which is extra biblical literature. If one washes no. after touching a corpse, so that's ritual washing, which is similar right. to Hebrews, where it says not laying again the foundation of washing or baptisms or whatever uh Dang. the book of the book of judah bathed at the spring at the camp and then isaiah my mind reels horrors overwhelm me so it's like you're immersed you're overwhelmed you know uh yes. uh my horror has appalled me it, it's like you're 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 drowning from the horror of it so this is a way where you can you could say, all right, what did Paul have in mind whenever he used it? So you could you, the Septuagint helps you with that, right? Yes. And you can see that a lot of it, most of the time, it does have some kind of immersive idea for dipping, 
Uh, it's used poetically in a couple places, but clearly the idea of immersion is the primary idea. Yes. If, whether it's literal or figurative, you're put into one substance than another. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is, is that when you put things in progressive revelation, let's just start with Paul. Which which one of these books came first? Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, or Colossians? I'm not sure. I don't have a study that. Galatians was the first book that Paul wrote. Okay. okay? Yeah. Now, the thing is, is that he wrote Romans from Corinth. Okay? okay. Yeah. So I don't remember which one was written uh, first, but if we go to the Ryrie Study Bible, there's other resources for this, but the Ryrie Study Bible. Uh, let's see. Uh, synopsis of Bible doctrine, how we got our Bible, archaeology, sir. Understanding the Bible. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. I may have to type it, type it in to find it. It's like it's where Bible? he's given a. Here we go. Timeline. Of, see, his his Bible always oh. gets at the beginning. Of his uh, uh, of the book, the chapter he has the outline of Acts, timeline of Acts. His timelines are pretty cool, you know. Oh, nice! And so you get an idea. Uh, wow. Thessalonians was written in fifty one, Galatians forty nine to fifty, and these may not be right, but you could check Constable's notes, you know, uh, yeah. which is more recent. Um, mm -hmm. but the let me see if I can find this. Uh, Paul's life is the one I'm looking for. Uh, uh, outline of Paul's life. So let me see if I can find this. Paul's life. No. Um, order of events. Historical background. No. I don't mm -hmm. remember where he puts it. He's got a chart somewhere in here that gives the order of the books. And this oh, is here it is. Chronological book. order of the books. Okay. Oh, nice. So he's saying these are the chronological order of the books. And nice. uh, he's got the different class. I forgot all the stuff that's in here. Uh, what is this? What is this? This is Rari at? Study Bible. Oh, I have a copy of that right here somewhere. A physical yeah, copy of it. I know. Uh, uh, it's the one you gave Jonah it. brought it from Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's have, see here. Does it have all the stuff in it? Yes. All, all, all that's in there? Okay, I didn't know. I'll take a look. Yes, all this is in there. Let's see here. Okay, you see this? Yes. History, a earlier written during this time, but when he gets to it's in the book of Acts, I think. Introduction to the Gospels, words. I could swear. Anyway, there's somewhere in there wherever he compares the life of a timeline of Acts. No, that's not it. It's somewhere in here. Um, let me just check here. That's the doctrines, inspiration, how we got our Bible. Archaeology. No, not really. Resurvey of church history. Early church. It all this is in there as far as uh, church history and all that, but somewhere in here, I don't know where it is. Oh, wait a minute. It's another resource. I'm so sorry. Ryrie. 
uh, biblical theology. He wrote a biblical theology of the New Testament. And in it, let's see. Um, background. No, that's not it. Introduction. Dates. Conclusion. Somewhere in here. I can't believe I'm having such trouble finding this. I'll just try one more time. If, the, if nothing shows up this time. I'll just let that one go. I, I, but there's a chart that Rari makes somewhere. I don't remember where it is. Okay. Uh, that uh, basically tells you the books in order of whenever they oh, occurred okay. as they relate to the life of Paul. But I'm not okay. seeing them there. Um, okay. But believe it or not, MacArthur's Bible does it. MacArthur's study Bible. Do you see it anywhere? I didn't see his name. Bible handbook. Oh, quick reference. Okay. We do the here. Here here's what one the option we can do. It's okay. Um, I don't, you don't, you don't need that, that specific detail. Well, I, I need to show you how to do this because this will affect your methodology. Okay, um, so do this. List the oh, New Testament books in chronological order. Nice. And you just got to find the right uh, resources. Um, logos. Yeah, you could go that route, but let me let me just do Rari. All right, so let's go to chat GPT. I haven't used it in a while. Oh, nice. Oh, you just, just Google it like that, huh? That was an app or something. Well, it can be. Yeah, it's an app you can use on your phone. Um, List the New Testament books in order in which they were written. Chat GPT could do all that stuff. Easy. Oh, look at that. All right. So, wow. They've even improved on this. Wow. So the exact order in which the books are written can be debated, but a commonly accepted approximate order is James, Galatians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Romans. So wow. if you were studying Romans 6, you would want to consider everything in that order. Mm. Okay? Makes and sense. then it gives you dates over here. And you could look at Constable's notes to check these. But let's see. Uh, lists the let's just say the books of the bible we'll we'll go a little bit broader here oh it's not one of me okay so let's do another one list the books of the bible in order of what they were written in the order uh, in the order they were written. In the order they 
were written. Hold on, hold on. I don't need all this sound stuff. You jerk. Stop, stop. Oh. Can you hear that? No. It's reading. It's oh, it's reading. <laughs> I don't want it to read, though. It's frustrating. Okay, let me do it again. Chat GPT is chatting, huh? Yeah, list the Old Testament books in the order they were written. Yeah. How do they put Genesis first? I thought uh, um, Job would have been first. Oh my gosh, turn that stupid thing off. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. Okay, but look. See, see they put Job as unknown. So oh. what you could do, what you could do, I'll close this because it's driving me crazy. But yeah. what you could do is you could use information from that and take your word study that you were doing, right? In the Septuagint. Yeah. And you could put these in order. Like, okay, because it starts with Exodus, right? Leviticus. Right. And uh, what you could do, if you wanted, you could summarize, okay, because uh, this is telling you there's only 20 results. Oh, it's not so bad. So you could start out your paper uh, something like this. While this paper will mainly focus on the use of baptismas in Paul's writings, it is important to understand that Paul is has the tendency to refer back to the Old Testament, being a Jew. Therefore, uh, a, a brief summary of the use of baptism, uh, baptis, uh will be cataloged uh, in this paper. And then you would just make a, you would read this passage and you would, you could say, because the issue of Romans six is whether baptism is spiritual identification or water, we will be asking these questions as they relate to these old Testament passages as well, you know, not going in detail, but when you look at it, you're dipping it into blood. It's not water, but it's immersion, right? Yes. But why does why do you dip something in blood in the first place? Substitution. So their identification idea could be already right there. Because huh. you're identifying as a servant whenever you put blood on yourself. Uh you're you're under the blood protection. So you might want to see. What, why did they do this dipping, you know, in the Old Testament? Um, and so you could follow that order. It's only 20 verses. You could do a summary of Old Testament oh. stuff. And then when you get to the, and then when, then you can go into Pauline writings and focus on Pauline writings and get a summary of that. But then go drop back down into Hebrew, into Romans. So that means there's going to be letters that Paul wrote after Romans that you will consider in your word study, but you can't say, oh, well, necessarily that he's using it in the same way that he wrote it in the future book. But you could say that it's possible, you know, you could you could do something like that. Say, say that again. He's not using it in the future book. Yeah, so if you if if you find a reference to baptism, uh, so let's go back and do let's see, Pauline epistles, right? So yeah. let's say uh, Colossians. Let's pretend I don't know if it has if it is. Let me check. Well, I don't remember where the 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 thing is. 
But let's just pretend that Colossians was written later than Romans, okay? Oh, I see. So whenever you're doing your study, you can say, okay, it looks like he's using it in this way. Uh, but you'll have to I qualify see. that and say uh, he okay. was aware of that usage and he might be using this usage in Romans or it may have developed throughout time. Because what you're doing is you're trying to show how Paul developed in his letters, progressed in his thinking. Gotcha. That's, Makes that's sense. one idea behind biblical theology. Okay. okay. Yes. So, um, yes. but you see, Corinthians is where you're going to spend most of your time about the use of baptism. Yes. At least as far as within Paul's writings. Yes. And then I need to look at the word baptism in other writers too, I guess. Just to... Yeah, but also, but also remember, I gave you a hint. This passage, Romans 6. Yes. We who died to sin. So the focus of all of this that he's saying relates to dying to sin. Well, how yes. do you die to sin? You've been baptized into Christ, and you've been baptized into his death. Yes. Okay? Is baptism into Christ or a reference to the church? Or does this mean because you've been identified with Christ? Well, you see but to baptize saying. into Christ makes it sound like uh, you have Holy Spirit baptism there. Like this is saying you've been placed into the body of Christ. Now, mm -hmm. there is a there is a book, uh, Ryrie's Basic Theology. He has a discussion about baptism. Let's see. All right. I need to translate it. Baptism of the Spirit. He has a diagram. Yeah, look at this diagram. View. Okay, can you see that? Let me bring it full uh, screen. It was easier before, and then you went smaller. All right, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I can see. All right. It. So he this is about the baptism in the spirit. Okay? Yes. It's predicted in the gospels based on these statements here. It's first fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, mentioned here, and it's explained by Paul in 1 Corinthians 12:13. In the mm -hmm. gospels, the usual interpretation is that it means in the Holy Spirit is the sphere and Christ is the agent. So whenever we're talking about, uh, I guess I'll do it, write it like this. So whenever, so what this is saying is Christ is the one plate. Whoa. Is it going to let me color? It should let me color. Draw. Okay, yeah. Christ is the one placing you into something. And it sounds like you're being baptized into the Holy Spirit. So Christ, Holy Spirit is the sphere, the round thing, and Christ is the agent, okay? And the Gospels. Okay. Now, oh, I see. Yeah. in the book of Acts, rather than in, it's by, where the Holy Spirit is the agent, and you're placed into the body of Christ. Interesting. As the sphere. And so that's 1 Corinthians, right? So this is the usual interpretation. But the thing is, is that if you're a Neo-Pentecostal interpretation, look what they're doing here. They're taking it as in in both places. 
So they say the Holy Spirit is the spear and Christ is the agent and it affects only some for tongues or power. So that's why they say you need to be baptized in the spirit. Or they'll say, have you been baptized by the spirit? Ultra dispensationalists uh, have that the you know, Holy Spirit is sphere. Okay. And then down here with the body, the Holy Spirit is the agent. The body of Christ is the sphere and affects all. And so he says, uh, in the true sphere, it's the Holy Spirit of the body of Christ, all occurrences, Christ and the Holy Spirit. So the issue is, in a given passage, is Christ uh, putting you into the, uh, to the Holy Spirit, or is the Holy Spirit putting you into the body of Christ? Mm. Okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think it. Where's my gr drawing? Gospels acts. Trash. Trash. Clear all my drawings. All right. So let's back up. So we go back to the Romans passage. Yes baptized into Christ. So notice this yeah. is passive voice right here. So it doesn't say who's doing the baptizing, who the agent is. But the agent is in Christ. The agent's probably the Holy Spirit in this example. Okay. So, or do you not know that all who the Holy Spirit places into Christ Jesus has been placed in, uh, into his death? Or does this mean, don't you know who the Holy Spirit identifies into Christ Jesus has been ident identified in his death? You know, it, it sounds awkward language, don't it? So yes. it's focusing on the baptism idea. Therefore, we who have been buried with him, that's how I was describing it, through baptism into death. So the death is the sphere. Okay? Uh -huh. So baptized yes. into Christ means be baptized into his death. So that uh -huh. as Christ was raised from the dead through the glorious Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If we have become united, this is another word to think about. Whatever this baptism is, it has a united idea. So a union. We're becoming one spirit with him. Right. If we become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would be no longer slaves to sin. So notice it's this idea you're buried with him, you're crucified with him. And you'll be resurrected with him. Um, right. But in Romans 8, like the chart I showed you, when it's talking about heirs, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may be also glorified with him. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea of co-death, -cru co co-crucifixion, co-glorification but this only occurs if you identify with it so when you believe the gospel you're identifying with the gospel message which includes his death and his resurrection now uh -huh. Ryrie wrote in his biblical theology let's just go look and see how he deals with Romans theology of Paul the doctrine of God uh, sin, salvation, the church is a mystery. Okay. Huh? This is Ryrie's theology book, you're saying? This is his biblical theology book. Okay. So, um, let me just type in baptized in. Paul declared they've been baptized in the body. All right, let me just say. 
basis of baptism. In in every instance, the reason for being baptized, so this is talking about water baptism, the kind of baptism, constraints of salvation, constrained to be baptized, the meaning of baptism, he's going through the method of baptism, the basis of baptism. But see, this is in the book of Acts. Now here, here he is talking in Corinthians, uh, all are baptized by the Spirit, but not all speak in tongues. Um, his work in relation to the church, so this is talking about the Holy Spirit baptism. The Spirit baptized, so that's in the book of Acts. So you see the issue? We, you learn more about the ministry of the Spirit doing the baptism from the book of Acts. The purpose of his ministry was to form the body of Christ. The Spirit governed the early church. All right, so he's going in that. Let's see if he mentions this. Uh, that's John the Baptist. Identity, he's talking about that right here. Um, the method of baptism. Let me show you, a, a, I think, a good passage to use. 1 Corinthians 10. Yeah, well, baptizing in the Moses. Yeah. That doesn't mean it can't be immersion there. Right. Uh, or unless it's metaphorical, like you're under his wing, you know. Uh, but it, it's identification. They were all baptized in the Moses in the cloud and the sea. And the yeah. benefit of using a passage like this is you can maybe see if this is how it's being described in the Septuagint in that way, you know? Right. So if we're if we're thinking about a structure for your paper, yeah. Don't write your introduction first, but if you just want to throw something on the paper to get an yeah. idea about it, so you would have your introduction. And what I usually do, even if you're going to change it later on, you're going to narrow your focus, the narrow the oh. scope of your paper. So what you're going to yeah. say is this paper is going to, uh, we're just going to use, um, we'll use a, a basic word for now. You could change this later on. Trace the development And Paul and Pauline theology or biblical theology of Paul's use of the baptism word group, baptism word group. to understand his doctrine of baptism primarily as it's articulated In Romans 6, okay? Uh, in particular, this paper will evaluate will evaluate uh, three common uh, three common explanations common. yeah explanations for baptism in Romans 
six. And so their spiritual identification and uh, immersion, or whatever it is, however you put it. Uh, yeah. It will also consider the implication of each. Uh, I'm not saying put all this in your paper, but you might say something like this. Um, the methodology so that's like the introduction and maybe you'll do something for methodology I'm not spelling methodology correctly but methodology uh, first this paper recognizes that Paul is a Jew mm -hmm. with the old Testament frame of reference. Okay. Yes. So your methodology would be to include, uh, to study the use in the Septuagint catalog, cat catalog, I think it's the word I used earlier. Sur summarize that. Okay. And then you might want to bring up Hebrew 6 because look oh, yeah. what Hebrew 6 says. Even though Hebrew 6 is not written by Paul. He says this. Elamir teaches about Christ that is pressed on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance or dead works and faith toward God, of instructions about washings. Now, this word washing is baptismal. Okay? So when we oh. go over here, now we're going to switch this to the New Testament. Or maybe, uh, I wonder if we can do two things. I've never tried that before. Well, let's just narrow it down to Hebrews. So there's two times that the book of Hebrews uses this word group about washings of laying on the hands and then 910. Since they relate only to food, drink, and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until a time of reformation. So this is the idea of washings, the ritual washings, you know, and that helps understand the Old Testament uh, references. So you could make mention of that. You could say, and you could probably have a footnote at the bottom, while it's debated whether he, uh, Hebrews, uh, whether Paul wrote Hebrews, this is brought in for its Old Testament comments on, you know, the Jewish view of things or something like that. And then you could say Hebrews will also be a, a point, a data point or whatever for uh, inputs into your study. Um, you know, something like that. You, you, could, you could soften it like that. But so essentially what you're having here is we kind of got your introduction. We You got you could do introduction. You can do methodology. Methodology. Well, methodology means theology. How like you're going to do it. Okay, gotcha. So, how you're going to do it. So you're going to go Septuagint first. Then you're going to focus yeah. on Pauline writings. That's yeah. the genre, right? Yes. And uh, you're going to stay in the realm of biblical theology first before moving to systematic. Okay. All right. Um. Oh. You still there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you have your intro. You have your methodology. So those are two things. A good thing to do also, and you may take this out later on, is put limitations. You'll write Limitation. something about the limitation of your paper. Like you may say something like uh, other other writers uh, use of baptism 
is beyond the scope of this paper. Uh, but their contribution could affect the fi uh, the information involved in this paper. You know, basically what yeah. you're saying is you don't think you got it all figured out. Uh, no. more study needs to be done in that area. So no. essentially, you got introduction. You got methodology. Methodology. And then uh, limitation. Limitations. Yeah. But you could also, you could actually put... These three is subcategories on under your one. So you could do something like this. You could say um, introduction. And we'll call that first thing that we wrote, we, we'll call that the thesis. Okay. Thesis statement, right? And yes. then methodology. Okay, I see. Uh, limitations. And that's all part of the introduction. Yes. You can do that it that sense. way. All right. Now, your body of paper, now the body of your paper would be Roman numeral two. And uh, the body of your paper is, let me think. So uh, we will do uh, Paul. New York. I don't know anybody in New York. Paul the Jew, right? And that would be bringing in the Septuagint. Okay? The Septuagint study. His Old Testament frame of reference. All right? Then you might do uh, something like Paul Pauline uses. So this would be wherever you're going through all the uses of Paul's use of baptism and word group in all of Pauline writing. All right. See. Okay. Then, so this is the yeah. then this section right here would be Paul's point in Romans 6. Okay. Then you can say uh so this is where you're just introducing it right yeah. and then uh possible in interpretations or whatever yes. uh considered yeah possible mm -hmm. interpretations that's the three things right the three things right spiritual um uh Water or yeah, identification, right? And then, uh, uh, then, uh, then you would say implications of each, right? I see, okay, and then implications and of that, and then, uh, you might do a comment, uh. Um, th this is not necessary. You may keep it or not. You might say, Paul, uh, I don't know what to think. I would say Hebrews. I would say Paul. I would still go with the Paul thing. Hebrews and other writers. And then this is where you would just make a brief summary or whatever about that information. And and mm -hmm. remind remind about the limitation thing that it's mm -hmm. beyond the scope, and then your third point will be your conclusion. Okay. And your your conclusion is going to restate your thesis mm -hmm. in a summary. You're going to restate it or summarize, however you want to say it, in a way yes. that's basically saying, 
this is what this paper set out to do. These were the uh, conclusions of it. And this was the result. Now, when you actually write your conclusion, just like when you write your introduction, your real introduction, you may change that. You may simplify this. But this structure will keep you organized as you're writing your paper. Yeah, and, sure. you know, restate and summary of this. And then uh, basically uh, state your intentions, maybe something like that, that you're going to do further research on something, you know, or mm -hmm. or something like that to remind the audit reader that uh, there's more work that needs to be done in this area. Okay. okay. That makes sense. So that um, that's your main structure: introduction, body, conclusion. Okay. Can you, okay. Uh, can you go back to the body again? Uh, let's see. Paul the uh, Jew. That's where you're bringing in your Septuagint study stuff. So what that that means? I, I'm going to go to Septuagint and perhaps talk about the 20 references to the word baptism. Yes, and, and see, I, I yes. Paul might have looked at it. I, I see. Yes, yes. Here that with Paul's uses. Don't epistles. get bogged down here. This is where you're just writing a, like a, a, a sentence or two about each one of them. Now, you may develop that later on, but this is just to have, what you're doing is you're trying to pretend like you're Paul. You're trying to put enough of the Old Testament in your mind so that you can almost think like Paul, you know, whenever you're reading it. That's the idea. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Okay. You thank can you. develop it later on, but you just don't want to get bogged down in this paper. Yeah, yeah see how fast you wrote that outline. It's great. Yeah, That's and wonderful. so you got to remember that this paper is 15 pages, okay? Yes. And that doesn't count the, uh, anything. It has to be 15 Full pages. It's not counting yeah. your bibliography or anything like that. So let's just assume yeah. that you're doing one page for the introduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're doing one page for the conclusion. Now, the reality is, is that your, your introduction and your conclusion are probably not going to be a full page. But we're just saying it's going to be on page one and page 15. You ain't got to worry about that. But what you could think about is, okay, Paul the Jew and the Septuagint. Well, let's just say you're going to let, uh, for the Septuagint part, you're going to spend, let's just say one page. Hmm. You may do more, but one or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah, we'll do that one. And then Pauline usages. All right, so Paul's usage is, that's going to be a little bit longer, and I'll tell you why. Mm. Because every time you come to a usage of Paul, what you probably yes. want to do is make a sentence summary about that book, okay? Okay. So you'll say, the book of Romans is written, da -da 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 -da. just real brief, you know, something generic, brief. Uh, the book of Romans was written... This passage that we're looking at, uh, so this you might include what you think are the major divisions. Like if you broke it down on the outline, you looked at Constable's notes, the major divisions, and you would say, okay, this falls within the section, and we'll look at this in a minute on Constable so we can see this. All right, this falls within this section about sanctification is usually what people say. And... Uh, Paragraph in question is Romans 6, 1 through 11. So every time every time you're in a new book, pulling from Paul, you need to do something like this. Now, if you're in the same book, then what you need to say is like, let's pretend you're in the book of Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is where he, he, the, these words occur most. Of all, Paul first mentions it in chapter one. There, the context is this. The idea seems to be this. Okay. In chapter uh, two, 
that idea is furthered right here, or there maybe there's a slight, slight twist or something like that. So you just go through all the different references and just make a, a few sentences. So what we're doing essentially, as you know, whenever I taught up you about descriptive summaries, like you did with yes. books and the Bible, you're just given a brief summary of your observation. Okay. You yeah. just follow this structure. And then once you have the skeleton, then we can start putting meat on the bones. You can wow. go back and say, all right, I got this information here. Am, am I convincing enough? Have I convinced a person of why I think that a certain view should be held, you know? Well, and then if you well, say no, it's like, okay, well, what information would I need to include? And then in addition to that, you want to ask the question, what about the opposite view? Do I know the other views well enough where I can steel man them, best represent them instead of straw man them? Have I looked at and evaluated all their answers to this and their arguments? Mm -hmm. And then basically, why is my interpretation of things uh, superior or it has greater explanatory power than these other views? Right. Is this it a sounds... both? Is this an either or issue or is it a both and issue? You know, that's where right. you're evaluating. Okay. okay. Yes. Right. So when you go to Constable's notes, All right, so Romans. Theme. Introduction. Outline. So you see his major division is 1 through 17 introduction. So you could say... Paul writes the book of Romans for whatever purpose or whatever. Then you go on and you see that Paul focuses on the need for righteousness in 1, 18 through 320. Don't go below that. Just stay at the major point level, okay, when you're writing your descriptive right. summary. And then when you get to your section, we're getting close. The second Just section, go ahead, what were you going to say? Um, I, you lost me. I'm looking at Constable's notes, and you're emphasizing the major titles for what for me to use that in my paper. Well, yeah, because remember what I said. I Every time you start a new book by Paul, you need yes. to mention the book where the word baptism is mentioned. Give the major divisions. Say something about the section that you're in, and then narrow down to the particular passage that you're dealing with. You need to do this for every book that you go to. And so what's going to happen is you're going to see baptism in Romans, baptism in Galatians, baptism in this, you know, it's going to be ordered like that. So if you want to think I, of it like this, the Pauline usages, the sub points would be. Uh, so let me let me make this again. I'll try to write it small so you can see the full outline. Introduction. I won't include everything under the introduction because you got that, right? Then we got oh. the body of the paper. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first A, what did I say it was? Oh, the Septuagint. Paul's right. use of the Septuagint. Right. And then you got Paul in the New Testament. Right. So why ain't he letting me draw? Oh, there it is. Septuagint. And then Pauline usages, right? Yes. We'll just say P-U. Okay, so underneath Pauline usages, let's just pretend that the first time the word baptism, the group, occurs in Galatians. So what you would call that is you would say bap baptism word group in Galatians. All right? Then you would do the introduction of the book the major divisions, the major section that you're in, where the word uses occurs, and then 
go to the next book. Baptism in uh, Corinthians. Okay? Do the same thing. And then baptism in Romans. You're going to do that for all of Paul's books in chronological order. Okay? And then, and then each book, uh, I, let's say, for example, Romans, I'm going to take them, I'm going to explain each division of the of each chapter coming up to chapter six no major you're divisions. only it's not me it's it's only major divisions these are larger than chapters so your introduction oh, might be see right here one through 17 the need for god's righteousness one this is chapter one all the way to three okay, mm -hmm, I see. okay. the imputation of god's righteousness three two one to five twenty one and you'll just mm -hmm. say that these major divisions, you put a footnote, these major divisions are of constable, you know. Uh, um, I see. And then four, the impartation of God's righteousness, chapter six through eight. Okay. Then gotcha. you see right here, and then you don't have to go beyond. You don't have to go out of that. All, so all you're going to do is it's saying uh, this focuses on the believer's relationship to sin. I suggest you use your own words, uh, yes. but he says this section is about the freedom from sin. Okay. Mm. So this is how you would deal with every one of them to narrow it down to the particular passage you're in. Now, of course, when you're in Corinthians, you're going to have lots of passages. Um, yes. Let's just do Corinthians. So you're going to have 113, 114, 16. Oh, wow. So chapter 1 is really uh, chapter 1, chapter 10, 12, and 15 are where the, they occur. Yes. And so you could be, all right, these are what's going on, but and you could talk about why do you think they're being mentioned here? Well, mm. people were teaching that they were baptized into different names. All right, they're identifying right. with different teachers. Right. You could use a metaphor and say they were immersed in the teaching of, or you could say they were under their wing. Uh, how I don't know, something like that. Okay. But yeah, so you would follow that structure, and then, yeah. and you, then you'll go into focusing at because after you surveyed all of Paul's usages. In, the, in all his books, then you're going to drop back into Romans 6 and take a closer look, okay? And you're then you're going to evaluate the possible interpretations, you know, uh, spiritual identification, uh, the other one you mentioned, and uh, if you come up with others. Then you're going to go into the implications, and then you may, if you want, consider other writers, and then mention the limitations. Okay. Got it. That's the paper. The yeah. And then there's the conclusions. Yeah, I gave you... I wish I wrote my papers this good. I, I don't know why. Like I always get clarity. I think that's... I always get clarity when I'm showing somebody else how to do things. But, uh, yeah. you know, this structure, this will get you going. You know? Yeah, for sure. You're not going to get bogged. Study. You're not going to get bogged down in word studies. You can always support your paper, but the faster you can get all of this done, the faster yeah. we can meet. And when we meet, then I could say, okay, now we're in the Old Testament. Let me show you some resources that you can quote to support what you're saying about the Septuagint. Mm -hmm. Now that we're in the Pauline writers, what lexicons should we use? So then you can go into more intensive word studies, you know? Right. Yes, that's right. But you but you don't want to do the word studies first and then write the paper, because then what's going to happen is your paper's just going to feel like a word study. But if you write right. it like this, where you're just getting your thoughts together, then whenever you fit in the word studies then uh, it's just it's going to have more continuity and cohesiveness. Things are going to stick together and flow together better. So, um, so all those things that you've written on, 
I need to be able to, uh, I guess, look at them as I'm filling it out because I can't memorize a lot. No, right? yeah, you're going to be writing everything. When you come to the first thing, first thing you're going to do is you're going to write this generic introduction, right? Then you're going to go into the methodology, write your generic methodology, whatever that is. Okay. Then you're going to start cataloging things in the Septuagint. So okay. uh, let's just Cataloging let's go. Things. All right. So the first occurrence in the Septuagint is in Exodus 12, 20, okay. where they are celebrating the Passover. And so it says, take a bunch of hyssop and dip it into the blood. So this is a person, an agent, taking the object, which is a, a hyssop, a branch of hyssop, and dipping it into the blood. So you mm -hmm. have immersion. You have uh, identification. And I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, but you also have substitution implied because where did the blood come from? came from a sacrifice. Right. So you can just make a note of those thoughts. You don't have to go into everything else. You just make a note of that and then you move on to the next passage. Okay. You're not you're not, you're not going in detail like we did in the New Testament with like the structure and all of that. It, that's not called for right here. You'd be here forever if you did that. Maybe if you want to make your paper longer, we can go back in and do that later on. But you're just making a note, observation on that particular passage, and you're going to the next one. You're just quickly jotting it down. Now, let me show you something that's in Schaefer's Systematic Theology about baptism. Schaefer's Systematic Theology. It's yeah. in the Doctrinal Summarization section. Doctrinal summarization. What he says about baptism... Uh, baptism real, baptism ritual. He's got two sections here. Um, and see, so he, he's doing systematic theology, right? Um, so right. he's going to start different than how you do. So let's just look at how he starts. You can do the same thing with Ryrie and other systematics. Uh, let me make this larger. Early writers on the general theme of baptism. Well, what's he mean by early writers? Uh, I don't know. What I don't know awesome? either. Does he mean early writers in the Bible? Does he mean early writers in scholarship? Maybe oh, Old yeah. Testament. But he says general theme of baptism distinguished between real baptism, which is wrought by the Holy Spirit, and ritual baptism. So no, he's talking about uh, previous systematic the theologians probably. Or other writers. Yeah. So these terms will serve to distinguish between two forms of baptism, which are so clearly identified in the New Testament. So notice he's pulling from the New Testament primarily. Yeah. Great significance should be attached to the fact that the same term, baptizo, is used in defining each of these baptisms. So notice he's only limiting it to the verb. Okay. Mm. But you see what he's doing? He's telling you his uh, in introduction, his methodology, if you will, is used in defining each of these baptisms. And it follows that any definition of the great New Testament word, if it is to be true, must be applicable to the one form of baptism as to the other. So he wants to transfer it over. Now watch what he does here. He goes with the root word. And that's the other way that you can get the use of the word, but you got to be careful of root fallacies. So if we go to the Bible word study and we click roots, you will see all those words that I was searching for earlier that I plugged mm. in. So you could, yes. I think you could do this. You could go here, click on that, click text, put it there, paste it in, and you don't even have to put lemma. You can just put the Greek or capital O R and do that. I think that's one way you can do it. Okay. okay. Yes. 
Um, but yeah, there that's the way that you can find the words. In fact, here's one form that I didn't get a while ago. Uh, but that's one way to do it. Just watch out for the root fallacy thing. You can put something like that in your footnote. So now he says the root word bapto, which is used but three times by the New Testament. So hmm. see, he's stuck. He's stuck in the New Testament for right now. Luke sixteen, yes. John thirteen, Revelation nineteen occurs in the first two passages with its primary meaning, which is to dip. While the use of the word is in the third passage. Now he goes to the end of the Bible. Revelation 19 illustrates its secondary meaning, which is to die or to stain. Okay. Hmm. But notice he pulls from Isaiah 63. So hmm. maybe that's a Septuagint passage you could look into. Or maybe yeah. it's just a concept. This evolution hmm. of the word from its primary meaning to dip to a secondary meaning is reasonable. That which is dyed or stained by dipping, bapto, persists as bapto when dyed or stained by any other method. So watch what he says. In like manner, the word baptizo in its primary import means to immerse or submerge. But its secondary meaning, which is a development from the primary, refers to an influence which one may exercise over another. Uh, so there's the idea of uh, identifying or having influence like as a teacher. As Dio defines it, bring it to complete subjection to an influence or imbue with virtues. I don't even know if I would go this route, but this is how he went. As an immersion serves to bring the thing immersed under influence of the element in which it's submerged, so in the evolution of the present word, a thing becomes baptized by another when when even without physical into, into position or development of one thing, exercises a positive influence over another. Apart from the recognition of this distinction, little understanding of many uses for the word will be gained. So you can evaluate whether you think uh, Schaefer's right on this, or is he reading this into the passage? A complete baptism is recognized in the New Testament, for example, without an intro position put in, put place into a position or physical development of individuals baptized into the remission of sins, into repentance, into the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, baptized by drinking the cup of suffering, or as Israel was baptized into Moses by the cloud and the sea, or when one is brought under the power of the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit of all believers are baptized into Christ's body. The term secondary is related to the latter sense of bapto does not imply inferiority, it is secondary only as far as meaning is derived from the other. Uh, I, well, I think the way that I told you was baptism, water baptism is the illustration, but the significance is identification. So he starts going yeah. through talking about this stuff. Um, and he has more that he says on that. But like I said, and then he has a section about baptismal ritual, different. So mm -hmm. after you do your work, you could go evaluate this. And you can go to Rari's mm -hmm. basic theology and do the same thing about his section under baptism. Wow. Okay? Now, this is where you're going into systematic theology, though. Also, the free uh, systematic theology that's online uh, that, that also uh, interacts with Schaefer and and uh and uh, uh Rari is right here Steve uh Waterhouse you might like him he's got a similar name Stephen Waterhouse uh -huh. so I'll just click read instead of download whoa all right so uh so if I just type in the word baptism It's baptism of John and salvation. This is a systematic theology, so it, it that first page looks weird. But so if you look at the structure of this thing, if we ever get there, see, goes in the same order as the systematic theology. Yeah. So you got the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of the church. 
And then, so we just search for the word baptism. Baptism of John and salvation. At different times that he brings up the word baptism, how it relates to not being about, about salvation. Uh, that may be something you include in your paper also. Uh, wrong views of baptism. That's why I mentioned there, you know, what is the relationship of baptism and salvation? And you can just trace through all the references to baptism and see how he uses them to talk about the same issues that we're talking about now. Baptismal regeneration, the Holy Spirit baptism. Let me get let me go on to a major section where it goes into the baptism of spirit. So he's got lots of stuff that there was a whole thing on Romans six. You see that? I didn't see he that. He has a he yeah he has a discussion on Romans six in the footnotes. Okay. Let me back okay. up. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this is Steve at? Steve Waterhouse. Oh okay. All right. So look what he says here. Though the author prefers to take baptism in Romans six as spirit baptism, one can understand Paul to mean water baptism without the inference that water baptism is a requirement for salvation. And so he goes into a description of all that. And and so, you know, these are systematic, uh, they're doing systematic theology, just like Stoller does, you know. Um, so they're thinking in terms of the same issues. Um, Baptism of John and Salvation. Let's see. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, 244. So you see right here, it's, he says baptism in. Introduction, definition, spirit baptism in the church. Spirit baptism is union in Christ. Baptism in the spirit makes union with Christ. Union in Christ joins all believers. The recipients of spirit baptism... Uh, so there's a section there. So let's see if I can find more references. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot. Here it is. Baptism in the spirit, introduction to definition. Now, this is footnotes. When you see this line here, these are massive yes. footnotes. And it's Amazing. in two columns. So you'll start here. And then you go here. Uh, this is, and you switch to this column, and this is a footnote. Uh, so okay. you go through, and he's talking about spirit baptism and the church system. Uh, spirit baptism and the union with Christ talks about the word in or by, like we were talking about Rari earlier, the yes. issues with that, the figurative meaning for it. The idea of baptism in also fits the context. See, he did something very similar that Ryrie did here. Water in, you know, he goes through that discussion. He even has these charts right here. The Holy Spirit, many believers join together in the Spirit of God equal the Spirit of Christ in Christ in the church. Oh. This one, individual believers are placed in. So he goes into some of these discussions that deal with the systematic theology stuff. I don't recommend you start here. I think you should interact with the systematic theologies after you get the stuff okay. done that we talked about. But yeah, these are things, one, these are resources you can use in your paper. Okay. Yeah, I, All I right? need a few references. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got you got Schaefer systematic theology. We mentioned Ryrie systematic theology. We got Nod by Bread Alone. Uh, you could use that Portrait of Righteousness book that I sent you by Anderson and Ratman, And we can uh, do other commentaries. I have lots of commentaries on Romans. You know, if you don't have it, I have it. And we'll just go from there. Okay, but to start, I'll use the outline, like you said, just to at least get a rough draft going. Yeah, it gets you going. Remember, you're not getting bogged down. You probably should spend no more than five minutes Seriously, 
You should spend no more than five minutes writing out a, a description of like what a Old Testament Septuagint passage is talking about. Okay. You can always go back later on and do more. But when you're making your descriptive sentences, and uh, you should do that. And if you want, if you want, when you're going into the Pauline stuff, you can do the same five minute thing on each reference. Then go back in and follow the structure of identifying the book, the subdivisions, okay. and then plug that in, you know? Okay. Uh, so what that's doing is it helps you get a frame of reference or gloss. Yeah, you're building your own kind of like a uh, working dictionary um, for this topic before you start diving in with other material. The yeah. goal is, is you want to have as much of your own thoughts on paper first. Okay. Okay. That way, you can't get in trouble for plagiarism if it's your own thoughts, you know? Right. That's and right. you'll feel more confident because it's your own writing, it's your own analysis. Now, when you go right. back and you interact with other resources, then you'll say, okay, I was wrong about this. This is a better explanation. This is, okay, this person's got a good explanation too. Uh, but I think mine is better, but I'll footnote them. You know, you'll be able to do all of that. But this will get you started. OK. Yes. And this this awesome. discussion that we just had, it turned out so good. I'm going to upload this one on YouTube, <laughs> oh. <laughs> even though people right. can see my bald head in my messy room. <laughs> You know, right. maybe they'll get an idea about what the layman seminary is about. We're just not about debating, you know. Yeah, that's great. Man, this is great, Charlie. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, please send me the YouTube video of this thing so I can, I can yeah. follow along. It, yeah. Um, and, and you know, if you weren't under the gun... You know me, I like uh, I like to do much as I possibly can before a semester ever starts. Yeah, I know. Even if I don't thing. even even if I yeah. don't even know what the semester is going to I mean the exact requirements of a paper, there's times I'll start my own paper and then nice. find out what it's about. And I'm like, okay, I can't use this for this class, but I got this yeah. for later on, you know. Nice. And That's amazing. it takes the stress off of me because I've already been meditating. I've already done all that. That way, when it comes down to, I mean, don't get me wrong. The stress is always there because I always mess up in formatting and other things like that. And I'm never happy with any of my papers, but I, I stress on different issues. You know, I'm able to make better progress than what I would if I waited to the last minute or something. Wow. Yeah. How you do, how you doing you in your Jesus life class, life of Jesus class? You're still in that class, right? Yeah, yeah. I I got a quiz. I'll probably take it tomorrow. Um, I thought I was going to get it done today, but I I did a four hour thing on it, and I still haven't even read the the transcript, which I'll probably would do tomorrow whenever I wake up. Since we study tonight, I'll do that tomorrow, and uh, uh go from there. But I think that there's no paper for the class, so that's easy. Um, that's but we're going to have a comprehensive final, I think. And so what I'll do at that point is I'll make a study guide and PowerPoint. Nice. And then I'll I'll do a presentation on that as well, you know, so that it helps internalize that stuff. And after this class, you'll have your your you'll be finished with with uh, Schaefer. My MBS, no, my MBS. I. I still have like eight classes to get my THM, but my master's of biblical studies I'll have. Okay. THM. What's THM? All right. I'm, I'm going to, okay. uh, THM is masters of theology. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to stop this. Okay.